Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So dear devotees, we thank you all for being here as always. And Maharaj, we thank you for making it today. Uh, uh, I don't know if I have to apologize here, but there was a miscommunication from our end to you, and we offer you our humblest apologies. Uh, but we'll try to work on it next time and do a better work. Okay. And so, uh, Bharat, I know you usually prefer to chant the Mandaracharam, so you can do so, and then we'll put the verse on the screen. All right. I just get my cartels. Did you from Majanga? Yes. So I think I'm going to do it. I think i One
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yes, Khan, founder Acharya Shiva Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jayam Vishnupad Paramhansa Pariprata Kacharya Stotra Satasi Simad Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Goswami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Ananta Koti Vaishnava Bindi Ki Jai. Amacharya Shiva Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Ram Sekaho, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Adwaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasadi Gaur, Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai. Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopina, Sham Kundaradha Kundagiri Govardhan Ki Jai. Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai, Navadweep Dham Ki Jai, Muna Mai Ki Jai, Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Tulsi Devi Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Sambeta Bhakta Rinda Ki Jai, Ditai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo. All glory is to the assembled devotees. All glory is to the assembled devotees. All glory is to the assembled devotees. All glory is all glory is to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. 
Oh, glory is to Srila Prabhupada. So, my dear devotees on Zoom, as far as possible, I would uh, request you to put on your cameras so we can see your moonlight faces. And it will be more personal. Thank you. So we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 4, The Process of Creation, Text 22. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Prachodita. Prachodita. Yena, Yena, Pura, Pura, Saraswati, Saraswati, Pitanvata, Pitanvata, Ajasya, Ajasya, Satim Smritim, Satim Smritim, Ridi, Ridi, Swa, Swa, Lakshana, Lakshana, Pradurabhut. Kila, Kila, Asyata, Asyata, Sa, Sa, Me, Me. Rishinam, Rishinam, Rishaba, Rishaba, Prasidatam, Prasidatam. Prachodita yena pura saraswati. Prachodita yena pura saraswati. Vitan jasya satim smitim vidi. Prachodita. Salakshana pradurabhut ki lasyata. Same rishinam rishabha prasidatam. Prachodita yena pura saraswati, itan vatajasya satim smritim hridi. Salakshana pradurabhut kilasyata, same rishinam rishabha prasidatam. Prachodita, inspired. Yena. Yena. By whom? By whom? Pura. Pura. In the beginning of creation. In the beginning of creation. Saraswati. The goddess of learning. The goddess of learning. Itanvata. Itanvata. Amplified. Amplified. Ajasya. Ajasya. Of Brahma. Brahma. The first created living being. First created living being. Satim Smritim. Satim Smritim. Potent memory. Potent memory. Pretty. Pretty. In the heart. In the heart. Swa. Swa. In his own. In his own. Lakshana. Lakshana. Aiming at. Aiming at. Pradurabhut. Pradurabhut. Was generated. Was generated. Kila, Kila, as if, as if, asyata, asyata, from the mouth, from the mouth, sa, sa, he, he, may, unto me, unto me, rishinam, rishinam, of the teachers, of the teachers, rishaba, rishaba, the chief, the chief. Proceed the Tom. Proceed the Tom. Be pleased. Be pleased. Translation. 
May the Lord, who in the beginning of the creation amplified the potent knowledge of Rama from within his heart and inspired him with full knowledge of creation and of his own self, and who appeared to be generated from the mouth of Brahma, be pleased with me. Please repeat. May the Lord, May the Lord who in the beginning of creation, in the beginning of creation amplified, the potent knowledge amplified the potent knowledge of Brahma, of Brahma from within his heart, from within his heart, and inspired him, and inspired him with full knowledge of creation, with full knowledge of creation, and of his own self, and of his own self, and who appeared, and who appeared to be generated, to be generated from the mouth of Brahma, from the mouth of Brahma, be pleased with me. Be pleased with me. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. As we have already discussed herein before, the Lord, as the super soul of all living beings, from Brahma to the insignificant ant, endows all with the required knowledge potent in every living being. So uh, the Lord is so kind that as the super soul, the Paramatma, he resides in the hearts of every uh, living entity. As Srila Prabhupada says, from Brahma to the insignificant ant, uh, he accompanies the living entity as his best friend. Uh, in whatever species of life the living entity enters. Uh, the Upanishads give the example of the individual soul and the super soul to be like two birds sitting on the same branch of a tree. Uh, because uh, the super soul is sitting next to the individual soul within the heart. So they're likened to two birds uh, sitting together on the branch of the, of, the, of the tree. And the individual soul um, is busy tasting the fruits of the tree. And some are sweet and some are sour. And the super soul is just waiting for the individual soul to turn to him and revive his relationship with him. Back to the purport. A living being is sufficiently potent to possess knowledge from the Lord in the proportion of 56 of 50, 60 fourths or 78% of the full knowledge acquirable. So Srila Rupa Goswami uh, in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu has uh, analyzed the Lord to have uh, uh, 64 qualities. And the living entities uh, possess 56, 50 of those 64 qualities, uh, though not to the same degree. Uh, this is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's sublime philosophy of Achintya Veda Veda Tattva inconceivable, simultaneous oneness and difference. Uh, the Lord and the living entities are one in quality, uh, but different in quantity because the Lord is infinite 
and the living entities are infinitesimal, whereas Srila Prabhupada would say infinite simul. So, uh, so yeah, so the living entity has more or less the same qualities of, of, as the Lord, at least 50 out of uh, 64, but in a much smaller quantity. Back to the purport. Since the living being is constitutionally part and parcel of the Lord, he is unable to assimilate all the knowledge that the Lord possesses himself. In the conditioned state, the living being is subject to forgetting everything after a change of body known as death. So yes, the living entity forgets, uh, even in this life, uh, he forgets uh, many things, especially uh, from the uh, earliest days and months of, of his or her life. And definitely, at the time of death, after leaving the body, uh, the living entity forgets everything. But there's a con continuity from one life to the next. So even though the living entity forgets, the Lord within the heart, as the super soul, reminds him so that he can begin where he left off in the previous life. So back to the purport. In the conditioned state, the living being is subject to forgetting everything after a change of body, known as death. This potent knowledge is again inspired by the Lord from within the heart of every living being. And it is known as the awakening of knowledge, or it is comparable to awakening from sleep or unconsciousness. This awakening of knowledge is under the full control of the Lord. And therefore we find in the practical world different grades of knowledge in different persons. This awakening of knowledge is neither an automatic nor a material interaction. So yes, if the living entity leaves his body, then he takes birth again to continue uh, the, the, uh, his journey in the material world uh, and to continue from where he left off in the previous life, the Lord from within the heart will remind him. Um, and as Srila Prabhupada's writes in the purport, this awakening of knowledge is neither an automatic nor a material interaction. The supply source is the Lord himself, Diyam Pati, or even Brahma, is also subject to this regulation of the Supreme Creator. In the beginning of the creation, Brahma is born first without any father and mother, because before Brahma, there were no other living beings. Brahma is born from the lotus, which grows from the abdomen 
of the Garbo Dakshai Vishnu. And therefore, he is known as Aja. Ja indicating uh, to take birth, like Janma, Ja. And A means not. So Aja means unborn. This Brahma or Aja is also a living being, part and parcel of the Lord. But being the most pious devotee of the Lord, Brahma is inspired by the Lord to create, subsequent to the main creation by the Lord through the agency of material nature. So the uh, very beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam uh, describes Lord Krishna as Tene Brahma Hridaya Adikavaye. Uh, he um, enlightened Brahma, Tene Brahma Hridaya from within the heart uh, with knowledge. Therefore, neither the material nature nor Brahma is independent of the Lord. But we are all dependent on the Lord for everything. And we benefit when we recognize our dependence on the Lord. And we suffer when we imagine ourselves to be independent. A material scientist can merely observe the reactions of the material nature without understanding the direction behind such activities. As a child can see the action of electricity without any knowledge of the powerhouse engineer. This imperfect knowledge of the material scientist is due to a poor fund of knowledge. A poor fund of knowledge is a polite way of saying ignorance. This imperfect knowledge of the material scientist is due to a poor fund of knowledge, or in other words, ignorance. The Vedic knowledge was therefore first impregnated within Brahma, Tene Brahma Hridaya Abhikadaya. And it appears that Brahma distributed the Vedic knowledge. In fact, Lord Brahma is uh, the original guru in our parampara. Uh, we are in the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. And our parampara begins with Krishna, then Brahma, then Narada, then Vyas, then uh, Madhvacharya, and so on, down to uh, Madhavendra Puri, uh, Ishwara Puri, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the six Goswamis, and then down, down, down to Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Srila Gorka Shordas Babaji Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhartha Saraswati Thakur, and our uh, beloved Srila Prabhupada, our founder Acharya. The Vedic knowledge was first impregnated within Brahma, and it appears that Brahma distributed the Vedic knowledge. Brahma is undoubtedly the speaker of the Vedic knowledge, but actually he was inspired by the Lord to receive such transcendental knowledge as it directly descends from the Lord. 
The Vedas are therefore called Aparusheya, or not imparted by any created being. So this is a very important point that the Vedas uh, are coming from God directly. And they are not um, uh, created by any living being. Before the creation, the Lord was there. Narayana Paro Vyaktat. And therefore, the words spoken by the Lord are vibrations of transcendental sound. There is a gulf of difference between the two qualities of sound, namely prakrita and aprakrita. Prakrita means material and aprakrita means spiritual or transcendental. The physicist can deal only <laughs> the physicist can deal only with the prakrita sound or sound vibrated in the material sky. And therefore, we must know that the Vedic sounds recorded in symbolic expressions cannot be understood by anyone within the universe unless and until one is inspired by the vibration of supernatural aprakrita sound, which descends in the chain of the cyclic succession from the Lord to Brahma, from Brahma to Narada, from Narada to Vyas, and so on. No mundane scholar can translate or reveal the true import of the Vedic mantras, hymns. They cannot be understood unless one is inspired or initiated by the authorized spiritual master. The original spiritual master is the Lord himself. And the succession comes down through the sources of Parampara, as clearly stated in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Yes, evam parampara praktam imam rajarshi That this knowledge was passed down through uh, parampara, and in that way, the saintly kings understood it. So, unless one receives the transcendental from the, the transcendental knowledge from the authorized parampara, one should be considered useless, nisphalamata, even though one may be greatly qualified in the mundane advancements of arts or science. So this Nishvala Mata is taken from a, a, a verse in Shastra, which says that uh, any mantra that is not received in a bona fide sampradaya through parampara uh, the, 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 the chanting of that mantra is nishvala mata, fruitless, useless. Shukadeva Goswami is praying to the Lord by dint of being inspired from within by the Lord so that he could rightly explain 
the facts and figures of creation as inquired by Maharaj Parikshit. A spiritual master is not a theoretical speculator like the mundane scholar, but is Shrofriyam Brahmanishtam. So that Sanskrit phrase, Shrofriyam Brahmanishtam, is part of a uh, description or definition of the uh, spiritual master or the acharya as given in the uh, Shastra. And Shrotriyam means uh, that he has heard from authorities, like uh, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, touch Shrinu, hear from me. So Shrotriyam Brahmanishtam, and Brahmanishtam means that he's fixed in uh, Brahma or a spiritual realization. And um, so, yes, we cannot really understand without the help and guidance of a spiritual master. And therefore, also in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, text 34, Lord Krishna instructs, Tadvidi pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya upadakshyanti te gyanam gyaninas tatvadarshina. Tadvidi, that means to understand, say the truth, Tadvidi. Uh, Tadvidi pranipatena. Pranipat means uh, to surrender um, in, in, in a more literal way it, it, it means to like um and we need 434 434 yes so tadvidi pranipatena means surrender pariprashnena to inquire submissively sevaya and to render service. And um, so Srila Prabhupada explains that these ingredients are required uh, when approaching a spiritual master. Uh, uh, and that is uh, surrender, service, and uh, submissive inquiry. And in fact, uh, Srila Rupa Goswami, in his Bhakti Rasamri to Sindhu, uh, lists uh, 64 items of devotional service, and 10 are preliminary. And the first preliminary items are uh, Adol Guru Padashraya, to surrender unto the lotus feet of the spiritual master. Shikshati, to take uh, instruction from him. Dikshati, to take initiation from him. And then the fourth item is to inquire. So in, in, inquiry is a part of the process of devotional service or bhakti yoga. And so the, all those elements combine in this verse, tadvidi pranipatena pariprashnena sevya vidakshanti te gyanam gyaninasvatpadarshina. And we are fortunate that um, directly or indirectly we have come in uh, touch with uh, his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. And uh, he has made this knowledge, which uh, by and large was, you could say, locked up in the Sanskrit language. 
and uh, he has uh, spent countless hours uh, translating these scriptures from Sanskrit into English, or in the case of Chaitanya Charitamrita from Bengali into English, so that we now have access to this knowledge that in essence was originally imparted by uh, Lord Krishna uh, to Lord Brahma. Dene Brahma Hridaya Adhikavaya. So we are uh, blessed to have this, have these books, and uh, we should uh, take advantage of them and read them and study them and apply what we have read in our lives. Uh, while we were sleeping, Srila Prabhupada was awake, translating. And so we should not, so yeah, we should make his efforts bear fruit by, by studying his books and applying what we uh, read in his books in our lives. And, uh, and of course, uh, as Srila Prabhupada write, writes in, um, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, well, the, the basic principle of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti is to always remember Krishna and never forget him. Smartavya Satatam Vishnu, Vismartavya Najatu Chit. One should always remember Krishna and never forget him at any time. And all the other positive injunctions are just servants of the one positive injunction to always remember Krishna. And all the negative prohibitions are just servants of the one negative prohibition to never forget Krishna. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada explains that there are many activities in the Krishna consciousness movement, but such as um, distributing books, uh, enrolling life members. We have so many different services in ISKCON. And as Srila Prabhupada says that in all of those services, we are meant to remember Krishna. Um, but then he says, um, to, to, to be able to always remember Krishna, one must chant a minimum uh, 16 rounds daily. Srila Prabhupada writes in the purport that yeah, of all the instructions of the spiritual master, the instruction to chant minimum 16 rounds daily is most essential. And so although all of our activities are meant to help us remember Krishna, or we are meant to remember Krishna while engaged in all of our devotional service, uh, but to actually be able to always remember Krishna and never forget him, uh, we should chant our uh, 16 rounds minimum. Of course, not everyone can begin with 16 rounds. And so the authorities have recommended that we keep some minimum. And uh, chant that minimum number without fail. And if by chance we happen to miss, then we make up the rounds we missed uh, the next day. And same with the 16 rounds. Uh, so yeah, we should be very vigilant and diligent in chanting our rounds. 
and always remaining engaged in devotional service. In one talk in Los Angeles, Srila Prabhupada said, if you've got time, chant Hare Krishna. Don't speak nonsense. Don't waste time. Chant Hare Krishna. So, my dear devotees, thank you for uh, joining us and listening so patiently and attentively. And now, um, if there's time, we can take questions and comments. Hare Krishna, thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. So, uh, dear devotees, uh, but to, if you have a question or comment, realizations, you may indicate by using the hand emoji and the, or your physical hand and you'll be asked to agree to this page. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, I have a question, and uh, if possible, uh, I would like to play a very short and brief video with audio, because I would like to take my question from that. Okay. Uh, yes. Let me see. I hope I have it here. Okay. And again, my dear devotees on Zoom, as far as possible, please put on your cameras. We can see your moonlight faces. Sweet pastime is recited by Hridayanand Babaji Maharaj, who was born in Radha Kund and had been a Pujari for 78 years. He stayed in Vrindavan, right next to Radha Damodar Temple. Upon being asked if he knew Srila Prabhupada, he began to cry and said, Never have I seen anyone do sadhana like he did. He worked very hard at Radha Damodar temple. At that time, Vrindavan was austere, undeveloped and very muddy, with no facilities available. Prabhupada spread this Krishna consciousness by the mercy of Rupa Goswami. Prabhupada used to pray to Rupa Goswami, You please give me your mercy. And then, he got that mercy. I know this because I saw some things he did at the Radha Damodar temple. My room is still located in the same place as it was back then in 1964 or 65. Many times in the middle of the night, at midnight or one or two in the morning, I would hear a voice crying from inside the courtyard by Rupa Goswami Samadhi Mandir. That voice was calling out and crying, but I did not know what it was because I was trying to take rest. But one night, on the full moon, I heard that voice again. So I climbed up to the roof of our house and looked down into the Radha Damodar courtyard. I saw something very amazing. Srila Prabhupada was sweeping the courtyard of Rupa Goswami's Samadhi. He was bending down with a small broom and as he swept the ground by the Samadhi, he was crying out, Hey Rupa! Hey Sanatana! Hey Gurudev! Please give me your mercy. Without your mercy, I cannot do anything. Give me the mercy. Give me the strength that I may fulfill your orders. And then I realized that it was he who almost every night was calling out as he was sweeping like this. Hare Krishna. Okay, my input. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, my right, for allowing me to play this uh, short video clip. But my question is from this video, uh, in the sense that uh, I might be wrong, but my observation in this country today is that slowly and gradually, lots of us as devotees are losing sight of the dependence of our gurus, that we do not 
uh, depend on our gurus as much as we need it to. Here we see Sri Prabhupada himself was crying out to his guru. He was crying out to Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami. But my, my question is, what, what probably could be the reason that lots of us as second, third generations are not having so much dependence on our gurus. But most of us think that if we do our devotional service, if we chant our rounds, if we do uh, this or that, it's enough. But my understanding is that we may do whatever, but if we do not have the mercy of the guru, we can go far. So what may be the problem and what is the solution to this problem? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, yes, uh, well, we find in the uh, Damodar Lila, when Mother Yashoda was trying to bind Krishna with ropes, no matter how many lengths of ropes she joined together, the ropes were always two fingers too short. But eventually, she was able to bind Krishna. And Srimad Bhagavatam mentions two uh, words or phrases in Sanskrit. One is parishram, which means hard labor or personal endeavor. And the other is Krishna Kripa, Krishna's mercy. So the Bhagavatam describes that when Krishna saw Mother Yashoda's Parishram, her hard labor and a personal endeavor, Krishna Kripa, he gave his mercy uh, and, and allowed her to bind him. So in all of our activities, we require both of these elements, uh, our, our own endeavor and uh, Krishna's mercy. And for us, Krishna's mercy comes through uh, the spiritual master. So we do our duties. <laughs> uh, uh, we, you know, we follow the regulated principles and we engage in the uh, practices of, uh, of bhakti yoga. But to, to be successful, we also need uh, Krishna Kripa or Guru Kripa. And then our efforts will be successful. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare Krishna. So, dear devotees, if anyone has a question, please, you may do so before my right leaves. Hare Krishna. All right. Uh, Sunita Devi, please, you may unmute. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Sundari. Please accept my humble obeisances, O oh Lord Shila Prabhupada, and your divine grace, Guru Maharaj. Nice yeah. to have your darshan. Thank you for joining us. Very good timing here in London, six o'clock. I could join. And um, very nice topic, Guru Maharaj, today. So um, I had the same question what Prabhuji had. Like, what do we do without our Guru Maharaj? And uh, you gave very nice answer. So um, my question is, Guru Maharaj, that um, I have few um, like uh, uh, devotees in my circle. They are very confused to find a guru. So um, how, how can I help them? What do I do? Because uh, 
you know, like uh, passing all the tests, they're finding it very hard to go ahead uh, with the um, Guru Prampara. So how can we help them to direct them to a Guru? Or how do, how do we know how which Guru to direct to them or how to, you know, help them? I would say there are two parts to the answer. The first part is to ask them why they want a guru. I mean, they should be serious in their desire uh, to have a guru. Because if they're not serious, uh, then they won't find a guru because they're not really ready to accept a guru. So that's the first thing I would do. I would ask them why, why they want a guru. As Srila Prabhupada said, you shouldn't accept a guru just as a fashion because others are doing it, so I will also do it. And then if they are serious, I always suggest that they pray to Srila Prabhupada to guide them to which of his servants he wants them to take shelter. Because he's our, our founder Acharya. And um, yeah, he, he in a way takes responsibility for all of the members in his con. And uh, so I always suggest to devotees that they pray to Srila Prabhupada uh, to guide them to which of his servants he wants them to uh, take shelter. And of course, by chanting <laughs> attentively, uh, they can also get insights. Oh, wonderful answer, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank Haribo. You. Yeah. Jai Gurudev. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think uh, Vijay, Vijay Prabhu, do you have a question? Please, you may unmute to ask your question. Uh, yes. Um, Prabhu, again, may, I, may, may you tell me your name? Uh, my name is Sahadev Das. Yes, Sahadev Prabhu, thank you very much. You're most kind. Maharaj, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, Maharaj, my, the quote from the purport, in order for me to ask my question, goes as follows. Quote, so unless one receives the transcendental knowledge from the authorized parampara, one should be considered useless. Nishfala mataha. Even though one may be greatly qualified in the mundane advancement of arts or science, unquote. So based on this quote, my question is, uh, I heard, or I have been hearing from the devotees that uh, Srila Prabhupada used to recommend in the following way, we should offer respect to these people. Um, um, but here in this quote, I see that these people are, are considered not different from useless. So uh, in, accord in accordance with the recommendation of Srila Prabhupada th that we should offer at least some respect to, to people who are categorized as useless, uh, my exact question is how far should we go with the offering of respect to these useless people? No, but to whom did Srila Prabhupada say we should offer respect? Uh, I, in order for me to answer your question, uh, I, I don't know to whom he said it, but uh, what, what stood out for me is that he said that we should uh, offer some, some, some quantity of respect because these people did a struggle for advance, make some, at least some advancement in, in some field of knowledge. And because of that, they deserve to be respected. 
but I, um, I may, I may, I may have heard it wrongly. So what I need to know uh, from you as the disciple that you are of Srila Prabhupada, did you ever hear that uh, Srila Prabhupada um, 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 uh, maybe you, you even heard it directly from him that some, some quantity and some quality of respect should be offered to these uh, useless people? If I may put my question in, in, in such a way. But who are useless people? Uh, the Nish, Nish Fala Mataha, uh, people who uh, uh, refuse to receive the transcendental knowledge from the authorized parampara. Although they are very advanced, they may be very, very advanced in uh, uh, arts, uh, in the fields of mundane arts and science. All right, I may share the screen. Uh, maybe that might. Yeah, I, I see that. Yeah. yeah. Yes, in, in this part of the purport, these people are, are being categorized as useless. Yeah. So why should we offer respect to useless people? Maybe Shiro Prabhupada didn't say it, but I, I heard it. Uh, in the past, uh, while in the association of devotees, that because these people did struggle for making advancement uh, in the mundane field related to arts and science, sciences, they do deserve some quantity and quality of respect from the devotees. Uh, related to uh, while related to uh, the devotees dealing with these people, preaching to them or something of the sort. Should we, how, how far should we, should we go uh, by offering them uh, at least some, some type of respect? Should we do it or not? I would say that we should because, um, you, you know, well, first of all, they are ultimately pure spirit souls, part and parcel of Krishna. And then the Lord is in their heart as the super soul with them. And um, yeah, to not appease you, Nietzsche, not to our peace, you know, Amani, Namarna, they not Kirtan, yes, and are. We should be ready to offer respect to others. And um, when we approach people with respect, then they will be more inclined to hear our message. If we don't show respect to the people whom we approach, then they will be um, discouraged and they, they won't want to hear us. They won't want to associate with us, in, in fact. So, yeah, we, we, should, we should offer it them respect we should show them respect yes maharaj uh, it, if we offer them respect then our preach our preaching may may be more successful yes yes thank you very much maharaj hare krishna hare krishna oh, anyone else with any question and thank you maharaj for the answer and uh, Vijay Krishna Prabhu, thank you for your question also. I think uh, you're what, welcome. I think what Sri Prabhupada was saying uh, simply may be understood in this way that if, uh, if we're having a problem with our laptop, we do, we do not go to the accountant for help because the accountant cannot fix the laptop problem. We have to go to a technician. So if we seek seeking spiritual knowledge, physicists, whoever cannot help us, we have to go to someone in the transcendental field, especially those coming from the parampara. That's what Sri Prabhupada was trying to say, that they are, they are useless approaching them for spiritual knowledge. <laughs> <laughs>
But Shrihopa is not saying that they are totally useless in all fields. Shrihopa himself, we all know that he was using uh, electronic device to uh, pre, uh, publish his books. And uh, just as uh, our revered creative has answered, we can use anything and everything in the service of Buddha and Krishna. So thank you, Maharaj. That was a good answer, Sahadev. Krishna Maharaj. Krishna, thank you. Um, anyone else with something else to share before Maharaj delivers? Maharaj, I've had this question, which is not directly related to today's uh, text, but we all hear that Maharaj Parikshit, by whose grace we are enjoying Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, is a very devout disciple of Shukadev Goswami. But I believe that before Maharaj Parikshit met Shukadev Goswami, he already had a spiritual master. He was, was a spiritualist. But we don't hear about this guru. We only hear about his guru, Shikadev Goswami. Uh, this makes me think that sometimes uh, we, we tend to overlook a, a help that we might have received from somebody. Now, in order for us to get to this level, somebody helped us somewhere to get to where we are. And I think sometimes we need to give recognition to such people who helped us get to where we are now. But if you have something to share uh, on this, like who was the guru of Maharaj Parikshit before he met uh, Shukadev Goswami and how much uh, honor and respect we have to give to such a personality. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Like I said, it's, it's quite outside today's text, but I also feel that we, we need to give respect and recognition to people who have helped us in a little or in a big way. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Um. Well, what you said is correct. I mean, the principle of, of feeling appreciation and gratitude towards anyone and everyone who help us along the spiritual path is, uh, is important. I mean, we are, we are benefited from so many devotees and we should appreciate the help that we've gotten from them. And as far as practical, um, express our uh, gratitude to them. And, um, you know, as, as we have learned over the years or over the decades in ISKCON, um, yeah, there's the Diksha Guru, who gives initiation, but there's also the Shiksha Guru who gives instruction. And um, so we should appreciate uh, not, not only our Diksha Guru, uh, but also our uh, Shiksha Gurus. And we can have so many. Um, according to Shastra, one can have only one Diksha Guru, but one can have many Shiksha Gurus. And um, yeah, Srila Prabhupada uh, has encouraged us to, you know, appreciate the help that we've gotten even from our God brothers and God sisters. Um, and uh, he said we can also regard them as gurus. Thank you so much, Maharaj. So it's, it seems the witnesses are already uh, satisfied with your presentation and they're no more hungry to 
getting more from you. <laughs> so uh, on this note, uh, if witness agree with me, then we may all be asked to unmute and we chant the loudest Hare Krishna Maha Mantra to <laughs> All right. And uh, his presence here and blessing us all. So we're going to have a request to all to unmute to what is please. And like Maharaj said, if possible, please turn on your cameras so Maharaj can see our mouths move with the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Dive. Hare. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare 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 Shila Prabhupada Ki. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. So if we're ending, you, some have done it on their own. But, um, uh, we should uh, conclude with Vaishnav Pranam. Okay. Let us all try respect for the Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Love you, Guru Thank Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Love you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. I miss you, Guru Maharaj. So now, how do we end? Oh, we're going to end. We're sorry. We've already ended. So, thank you all the watchers, and we hope to have your association sometime very soon. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.